In this Good Friday message, we look at the cross, the meaning of repentance, and what is available to us when we truly repent. Today we have um, Pastor Ivan Raskino with us. Um, I'll just give a brief introduction. Uh, uh, Pastor Ivan was uh, a professional marine engineer and naval architect uh, in Mumbai, and he gave his Lord's to, uh, gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, at the age of 40, back in 1982. Uh, five years later, in 87, uh, the Lord called him into ministry. And uh, so he left his professional job. He moved into full-time ministry, working among the, uh, the downtrodden in Mumbai, India. And uh, during that time, he, he and his wife, Melanie, his wife, Melanie, is also here. Um, they ministered together to hurting people from different backgrounds. And uh, Pastor Ivan, uh, he served also as the prayer coordinator in Mumbai City for the pastors coming together and prayer. So he spent many years, or they spent many years together uh, ministering in Mumbai. Uh, a couple of years ago, was, was that five years, six years, uh, he uh, quote-unquote retired. You never retire from ministry, right? But uh, he handed off the work in Mumbai uh, to others, and he and his wife moved to Bangalore, so now they are based in Bangalore. Uh, Pastor Ivan and I, we meet almost every month uh, at our pastor's breakfast meeting, so over the years, we've become good friends. He leads uh, many, many Wednesdays, he leads our uh, prayer time at the pastor's breakfast meeting. Uh, so currently, he travels, um, mainly mentoring pastors, ministering to pastors. He is also writing books on uh, pastoral and other uh, biblical topics. Uh, he and his wife, Melanie, are married for almost 48 or 49 years now. They're hitting 50. <laughs> so, and uh, they have um, four children and four grandchildren. So why don't we all rise up to our feet, please. Put our hands together and let's welcome Pastor Ivan, as he comes to minister to us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this welcome. Yeah. Uh, you know, when my children were young, uh, and they were kids, you know, something like eight, nine years old, I used to tell them stories. And so, bedtime stories. And I used to put them to sleep with these stories. And, uh, and invariably, you know, they would, they would come and then I would tell them the story about basically that there was a problem somewhere. And I used to get them involved in that story. You know, my eldest daughter, her name was Gia, so there was one small child in the story, her name was Gelano. It's not Gia, Gelano. And she could identify with that, you understand? And, and like that, all my children were part of that story, but we changed names. And there was a problem, but there was a hero. And the hero came and took the help of these children and defeated, you know, the, the culprit, the enemy, defeated. And they would listen to that story, you know, with mouth open, and I would stop here, and they would say, ah, Dad, what happened? And every, 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 every night this would happen, virtually every night, you know. And, uh, and they had to know the end of the story. I mean, the end of the story was always good, all right? And then they would sleep and be quite happy about it. <clears throat> so, well, the Bible is a story. I just want to tell you that. And the story of the Bible is that, you know, you have... God created the whole universe and he made man as well and mankind, men and women, and put them in charge of the whole earth, you know, whole earth is put under the, and they sinned, they turned away from God. And what happened was, there was a huge problem, 
cosmic problem, all right? Where, and that cosmic problem, you can see it. I mean, there is garbage in Bangalore, you know, there is laziness, there is corruption, but it's everywhere. Deforest deforestation is everywhere. There is a cosmic problem. Man is fractured. We are all fractured. All of us. The whole lot of us. So, what does God do? He sends a hero. And that's Jesus. He comes. And he, he, you know, he pays for your sin, but he does more than that. It's just not just paying for your sin. He defeats the cosmic problem. It's a cosmic nature. You know, that means everything, all this garbage problem, corruption, and whatnot, and death. And death. Even that he defeats. And every sadness and every tear and everything, he defeats it. And he does that on the cross. All right, so the cross is central to the story. You understand? It's, you take out the cross and everything crumbles. Okay, the whole thing crumbles. I mean, the cross is so beautiful. And of course, he gets us involved. You know, my children, how I got them involved in the story? He gets us involved in his story. All right? And there is an end. And so you can sleep after that. Yeah. <laughs> it's not unending. There is an end. And it's a happy ending. Where sin, death, Satan, the last enemy is death. Last enemy. Out. Okay? And God is interested in restoring his creation. It is his creation. His creation has been spoiled. You understand? And he solves that with this one hero. And so understand, everyone has stories. I mean, there are a lot of philosophies in the world. And you ask them, what story? What is your story? And you know, they will be stumped. Because they don't have a story. They don't have it. It's all round and round and round and round the mulberry bush forever and ever. You understand? They don't. But we have a story. And it's the story of the father heart of God sending his son to restore, to, to restore that fracture. That fracture in our own hearts. Right? So, so that's the meta story of the Bible. Okay, the big story of the Bible, because then you will say, well, I mean, there's a lot in this Bible. If you sort of, why don't you just say that? And that's two pages, and then the Bible is over. No, there is a meta story. That's a meta story. And then there is a second level story. I mean, it's the top story, and then there is a second level story. And he does that by means of two covenants the old covenant and the new covenant. That's the second level. You understand? Right? Uh, and what's the meaning of covenant? I assure you, I assure you, I make a promise to you. But it's a promise that I can't break because if I break that promise, I break myself because I'm faithful God. Right? So that's the second level. I mean, it's the old covenant, which is a training and leading us and teaching us to this wonderful event of the cross, which begins the new covenant. So there are two covenants, old and the new. And God says in the Bible, of all the things you have to remember, remember two things. The Exodus, the Passover. Remember that. Every time he says, tell your children about it. It's two things in the Bible which he calls us to remember. He calls us to remember the old covenant, the Passover, and he calls us to remember the new covenant, which is the breaking of the bread, which we have just had. These two things are so important, right? And that's the old covenant. Of course, we don't remember the Passover because the Passover was within the breaking of the bread. All right? It was only a type of the new covenant. 
The fulfillment of the Passover is Jesus. Jesus is our Passover lamb. So the old covenant and you need, that's the second level. And what's the third level? The third level is you and I, and David, and Abraham, and Samson, and Esther, and all those characters in the Bible, but also you and I, because we are all going on a journey. You understand? And you see the journey of Abraham. Abraham, leave this country, and I'll take you. Where? Where, where Lord? North, south, east, west? Where? No, don't worry. Just follow me. But there's a journey. Everybody is going through a journey. And even you and I are going through a journey. So we are part of that third level. You get the point? All right. So that was just to tell you uh, about the Bible. <laughs> and I'm going to give you seven points. And the subject today is cross, repentance, and blessing. And of course, Pastor Ashish actually did it so well in the breaking of the bread. You know, the cross, repenting, repentance, and blessing. So there are seven points which I want to bring about, and I'll read it out to you. It's the first one is the testimony of a 13-year-old Jewish boy. The second is the meaning of repentance. The third is the case of the three cities. Fourth, Jesus reveals the Father's heart. Fifth, the three, city, the three cities were stuck. They were stuck in their old perception. Uh, sixth, cross displays the Father's heart and releases his blessing. That's what Pastor Ashish did. And the seventh, as the Father sent me, I send you. That's what Jesus says. All right? So there are seven points that we are going to look at. So let us look at the first point. And uh, the testimony of a 13-year-old Jewish boy. And this is that. Jesus, I know you died for me, but I don't give a damn. You can check it out on Google, by the way. You can type that sentence and you will get that testimony. But I'll tell it to you. You know, so Cardinal Lustiger, Jean-Marie Lustiger, he was the, he was the, uh, he was the Archbishop of Paris for many, many, many years. He died just about 12 years ago in 2007, if I think right. He was, he was a very popular cardinal, Jean-Marie Lustiger. Very, very popular cardinal. In fact, they thought he might be a pope. And in his sermon one day, he talked about a 13-year-old Jewish boy. And he said, you know, uh, I've got grandchildren, actually, of that age, and I know how mischievous they can be. And so these, these youngsters, they were chatting around, and this is, we pull a prank on this Catholic priest who was sitting in the confessional. And we will tell him some wild sins. 13-year-old, <sighs> by the way. Wild sins. And they chuckle, 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 chuckle. And they went for a confession. And Jean-Marie, this, uh, this, uh, sorry, this 13-year-old boy, this Jewish boy said, I'll go, I'll go. I mean, I got nothing to lose. I'm Jew. And so he went and he said, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. And then he went into those wild sins. And this priest, he was a wise man. And he realized that this is a mischievous guy. So he says, son, you see that cross on the other side? Go there, and your penance is to stand before the cross and say, Jesus, I know you died for me, but I don't give a damn. Oh, he says, that's great. I'll do that. I got nothing to lose. I'm a Jew. <laughs> and he went over there. He went there, and he says, Jesus, I know you died for me, <laughs> and I don't give a damn. <laughs> the second time he said, Jesus, I know you died for me, but I don't give a damn. <laughs> And the third time he says, Jesus, I know you died for me, but I... And he was cut to the heart. Something happened. He was cut to the heart. He gave his life to Jesus that day. The next year he was baptized in the Catholic Church. And Cardinal Lustiger said, I know this story is true because I was that boy. Right? Sir. So, that's a good story. 
Right? That's a good story. Let us pray. Because I want to ask you, I say, God, I pray that we will be presented, we will be faced with that cross, and it will make a difference in our lives. Shall we just pray for a short while? All right. Father, I praise your name. Lord, the central fact, the central fact was the cross in the whole of the history of mankind, Lord. And Lord, that cross touched that Jewish boy, Lord, and touched countless people's lives. And I pray, Lord, that you will touch our lives today. Touch us deeply, O oh God, and change us. Even after we have known Jesus, Lord, we want to be touched deeper and deeper and deeper. And that cross, Lord, let it make a huge difference in our lives, Lord. A defining difference, Lord. I pray, Lord God, that we will be transformed today. I ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit, Lord. And give us that revelation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, I come to the second point is repentance. Now, it's important why I'm talking about it. You will find why it's important. Now, repentance is meta neo. Okay, meta means change. Neo means perception afterwards. After something is presented to you. Right? Your perception changes. And uh, repentance means to change your perception after something is presented to you. And I've given sort of the, the source where I got this definition from, from Wine's uh, Expository Dictionary of Biblical Words. This is the normal and the common meaning. But we use it in the secondary sense that repentance means turn away from sin and turn to God. That's not wrong, but it's secondary. It's not the primary meaning. In fact, in the Gospels, the first time, the only time when it is repentance from sin, it's given in Luke chapter 17, verses 3 and 4. You don't, you don't have to go into it. All you have to do is to remember that true repentance means that to change your perception after something is presented to you. And so, in the case of this young Jewish boy, when suddenly the Holy Spirit presented him the beauty, the beauty of the cross, the centrality of the cross, his perceptions changed. And when your perception changes, your heart changes. And when your heart changes, your walk changes. Your actions change. So, when John the Baptist says, keep, I mean, you know, let the fruit of your repentance be seen, he's saying, he's saying your perception should change and your walk should change. I mean, that's the real fruit of repentance. All right? That's the real fruit. Okay, so we go to the next point. The case of the three cities, and that's, I'm looking at Matthew 11, 20 to 24. But uh, to begin off with, I will look at uh, John chapter 21, verse 25, to begin off with, all right? Now, in the book of John, it says over there that Jesus did many other things as well. All right, there we are. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. I mean, he did many things. And John, of course, he might have used a phrase, but it was so many that he couldn't recount. It was just too many. So now we come to the three cities, and then you will understand why I brought this verse. Matthew eleven twenty to 24. Then Jesus began to denounce the towns in which most of his miracles had been performed because they did not repent. Now, he did so many things, so many things. You couldn't recount them. And most of his miracles were done in three towns. Now, I was trying to figure out 
how big were those towns? I mean, the major one was Capernaum. It had 1,500. That was the population. That was all. St. Joseph's has 3,300 students. Half of St. Joseph's. That was the town. I'm just giving you a perspective. Why, why this perspective is important is because virtually every family had seen those miracles. Because most of his miracles were done, were done in Capernaum, Bethsaida, and Chorazin. And Chorazin and Bethsaida were smaller towns oh, than Capernaum. So can you imagine in these towns where Jesus' miracles were the most Every single family would have been, or the neighbor would have been touched. Somebody was lame. Oh, he's healed. This person, he's healed. He, most of his miracles were done in these three towns. And they did not repent. What it meant is their perception did not change. They were stuck in their old perception. They were stuck in their old perception. And so let me finish reading that. Then Jesus began to denounce the towns in which most of his miracles had been performed because they did not repent. He says, woe to you, Chorazin, woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more bearable, etc., etc., etc. All right, so you got the picture. They did not repent. Jesus, the fourth point, Jesus reveals the father heart of God of blessing. Jesus reveals the father's heart of blessing. A, through the abundant miracles. All right? Through the abundant miracles. You know, just we were reading those three towns and so many miracles. Oh, here we are. I didn't see that. I'm looking at the miracle. All right, good. That's good. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, but this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Sometimes I wonder, I mean, this is my theory. You don't have to accept it. Why is Jesus, why is the second person of the Trinity called the Son of God? Why? And I think to myself, it's only a Son can reveal the Father. So he came to reveal the Father heart of God. Because only a son can reveal the father's heart. And he assumed this title, the son of God. Or the Bible calls him the son of God. Because the son only knows the father. And he came on earth to reveal the father. And his heart for you and for me. I mean, after all, it's God's creation. We're all part of God's creation. And the way he revealed his heart was two things. At least in this passage. Was the first is... To abundant miracles. And, I, and why, why, why is that? I mean, if you look into the Bible, you look into anybody's ministry, the abundance of miracles did not take place like what happened in the ministry of Jesus. Abundant miracles. One after the other. Couldn't count them. Couldn't count them. And I think to myself, why, why is this revealing the father's heart? Well, very clearly, if there are fathers sitting over here, and I'm sure there are many, and if your children are going through a hard time, and you say, you, well, say, well, pray harder, work harder. I mean, what would be your heart? Especially if you have all the means and the heart to help your children. And can you imagine the father 
He is looking at all of creation. It is his creation. His creation is fractured. There is such a lot of problems in creation. Such a lot of problems in your life, in my life, in the life of every human being. When he's sitting coolly and saying, well, bad. That's bad. Well, you should. Can't do much. And he has the means. And he has a heart. Of course, he would come down. He would come down. And so, the ministry of Jesus, the first thing you could see about it, was how he alleviated, how he met with the misery of mankind. And so he met with the misery and people came and flocked and there were so many crowds that followed Jesus. They had to break the, the roof and bring some people down. I mean, because he was displaying the heart of God, the heart that had compassion on the suffering and the misery of people. And of course, let me tell you one thing. You're part of that story. Don't ever forget. You're part of that story. Right? And so he did it to alleviate suffering. But you see, the people were stuck. They asked him for one sign after the other. Well, this thing, what happened? This thing, questions, that, this, that. They were stuck. They were stuck. You see, they were stuck in the old perception. The old perception was to teach people that one day the Son of God will come. The old perception was leading to the revelation of Jesus Christ. But they were stuck in that old perception. In the old perception, sin was considered unclean. And that is right. Sin is considered destructive. And that is right. Perfectly right. That's the truth. Sin is unclean. Sin is destructive. It's right. And so, you couldn't touch a dead body because the cause of death was sin. The wages of sin is death. Couldn't touch it because if you touch a dead body, you become unclean. You couldn't touch a leper because a leper, leprosy was a sin of rebellion. And so that was a symbol of rebellion. So you couldn't touch that leper because if you touch that leper, you become unclean. So they were, they said, and Jesus came and he touched the leper and he cleansed the leper and that which was unclean became clean. He touched the leper. He raised Tabitha, rise up. He raised that young girl from the dead. You see, he, 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 he raised Lazarus from the dead. He was, he, whatever was unclean, he touched and made it clean. And so people flocked to Jesus, flocked towards him. Because grace was oozing from Jesus. It was oozing out. Oozing out. So, you know, when something like honey is oozing out and the bees come, people came flocking to him. And prostitutes came. Mary Magdalene, she was from Magdala. Magdala was a red light area in that place. So most people say she was also part of that, that group. And anyway, she had seven demons. And she came to him. And grace was oozing out from him. And that grace set her free. And by the way, set her so free that she followed him. Because grace, she followed this grace. She followed grace. Okay? And she followed grace right till the end. Even on the cross, there was Mary Magdalene over there. When Jesus rose from the dead, he, he visited Mary Magdalene first. That was so unclean, became so clean, whiter than snow, whiter than snow. And that was what Jesus, our Lord Jesus did on that cross. But they were stuck in their old perception. They were stuck. They could not. They kept on asking for sign after sign. You see, questions are, questions are uh, all right if you have questions. 
Nothing wrong in being questioning if you have questions. But have questions with the right heart. I want to know the truth. Don't have questions with a heart that says, no, no. So, Jesus called them, you wicked and adulterous generation. I'll tell you what happened once with me, you know, there was this courier guy came with a check, you know, the checkbook, and he came to my house and he said, uh, this is a checkbook from the bank, and it is for your daughter. Uh, uh, sorry, it is for Gia. So I said, she's my daughter. She said, uh, he says, she's a daughter? Yeah. Uh, how do I know she's your daughter? Oh, I said, okay. I was alone at home and I was thinking, oh, shit, I must get a birth certificate. Can you imagine? I don't know whether you can locate your children's birth certificate, but I had to do that because I had to get the checkbook from the courier guy. So I went and I got the check. I got the birth certificate. See, see. So Gia, father, Ivan, mother, Melanie. See, see that. He saw it. Uh, but he says, Raskino, you know, but her name is something else. I said, she got married. That's why. Oh, he said, how do I know? <laughs> oh, I said, okay, okay, all right, all right. I went and so, 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 and got a marriage certificate. Wow. And I brought the marriage certificate. And I see, this is it. She got married to so and so. And I was the person who got the marriage. See, my name, Ivan Raskino. You saw it. He said, but how do I know you are Ivan Raskino? Wicked and adulterous generation. So, <laughs> some people you can't satisfy. They are stuck. They were stuck. And they kept on asking him for a sign, after sign, and after sign. They were, they were stuck. Mark 4.12, it says over there, they may be ever seeing, but never perceiving. And ever hearing, but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Uh, we'll find it later. So they, they were ever seeing, but never perceiving. Because if they perceived, their actions would change. They would turn, and I would forgive them. But they were stuck. And, I, and I'm going to also call you not to be stuck. Not for salvation, but the full blessing. Some of you have received Christ. But for the full blessing, because you see, as Jesus was talking and in Matthew 11, he ends up with, he ends up with uh, 4B, he ends up that the blessing of abundant miracles were also leading through the offer of rest and maturity. 4B. And he says in Matthew 11, 28 to 30, he says, come to me. Come. Come to me. Man, come to me, he says. Come. I don't know how you said it. But I think it is with, you know, with a lot of cry. Because he came for people who are fractured. He came for us who are fractured. And he said, come to me. Come. Come to me and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. You know, the fall of man, the curse of the fall of man is toil, frustration. That is the curse. But you can try what you want. Bangalore will still have garbage. The lakes will still have a problem. Mankind will still have a problem. I mean, just said Bangalore. But there's a toil. But rest is the blessing of the cross. Okay? Rest is the blessing of the cross. You see, when you give your life to Christ, the first thing that happens, 
deep inside your heart, you have an experience. An experience of what? Peace. I've given, you know, I have let even a nine-year-old, a ten-year-old child to Christ. And I asked him, what do you feel, son? I feel peace in my heart. I feel peace in my heart. And the first thing when you come to Christ is you have peace inside. That's the first taste of Jesus. He comes and he resides in your spirit man. Because we are made of three things. We are made of body, which we can touch the world, see the world, etc. through our body. We are made up of soul, which makes us self-conscious. And uh, there's a mind inside Emotions are inside, and all these things are inside the soul. And the universe is so big, but the soul makes you think that you are the center of the universe. I mean, that is for everybody. It's true for everybody. Right? The soul is so self-conscious. And then there is a spirit, which is God-conscious. Right? And Jesus, when you receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, he resides in your spirit. You want to say that? He resides there. But you have the soul, and now, which is self conscious and wants to do everything, you know, according to your own desires. And so Jesus says something else. He says, Come to me, all who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and you will find rest. That's another rest, all right? Take my yoke upon you, and you will find rest. And he, then he goes on, he says, you see, but my yoke is light, and I'm humble of heart. I'm meek and humble of heart. You don't have to fear me. I love you. I love you. Now, what is this yoke? Well, you know, the Bible does say, don't be yoked with unbelievers. What does it mean? It means that, you know, my wife and I are married for so many years. We are yoked together. We have the same purpose and the same priorities. That means yoke. Right? Same purpose and same priorities. If, there was, if one was an unbeliever, then the purpose and the priorities are different. Right? So when he says, take my yoke, means he says, take my priorities and my purpose. All right? You, you are yoked with Jesus. Okay, and he says, when you do that, you see, the problem is the soul. The soul wants to have its own way. And Jesus says, okay, you can go and have your way. I'm, I'm inside your spirit, but if you want the soul to go out and have its way, you will go into unrest. So many Christians find themselves in unrest. They have experienced salvation, but they enter into unrest. Why? Because the soul wants to have its own way. And so you have to, whenever there is a problem in your life, you go deep inside your spirit man. You withdraw into your spirit man and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'll walk with you. And Jesus said, all right, son. All right, my girl. I'll teach you. I'll teach you. And it takes some time. And then you will find that he is humble and meek of heart. And you can trust him. It takes some time. And you might have questions. But how? But this? But what will happen? But this thing? And he, I mean, that boy might leave me, Lord Jesus. Don't worry. I'll handle him. You trust me. You trust me. Go into your soul. Go into your spirit. And when you do that, you become mature. You see, that's the meaning of Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 8, 14. For those who are led by the Spirit, that means the Spirit of Christ, they are the sons of God. That's sons of God. Son means the mature sons of God. God wants to give you rest and maturity. That's the blessing of God. That is the blessing of God. And that is the purpose of God for each and every one of us. And that was purchased on the cross. There's a power of the cross. 
and is purchased through the cross. And so don't be stuck like those three, three cities. And say, God, oh Lord, man, I don't want to be stuck going with my soul all around the place. I want to change my perception. I say, God, I, I want to yield to the Spirit. I want discipleship means what? Bringing every area of your life, every area of the life under the Lordship of Jesus. Every area. That's the meaning of discipleship. Right? Every area. Saying, Lord Jesus, I will listen to you. And he is meek and humble of heart. And he loves you. And that's the blessing of the cross. That's a blessing of the cross. So the blessing of the cross is also rest and maturity. Right. So don't get stuck. I'm jumping now to... Now, there's another thing about the blessing of the cross. You see, Jesus died for everything that, everything that spoiled creation, including your sickness, including the problems in your family. I know there are many family people over here, and they have problems. I have, I have problems. I'm a family man. I have four children. They are remarkable children. I've always said that. They gave me remarkable problems as well. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Really remarkable problems. But I've seen the faithfulness of God. We are a testimony of God's faithfulness because of the cross. Because of the cross. He says, I will bring your children. Don't worry. There is salvation for your entire household in me. Forget about the household, man. I died for every single problem in the world, including your problems. Including your problem. And you've got to trust him. See, faith is not, see, listen, 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 listen. Faith is not denying that you don't have problems. Because that would be absolutely like an ostrich. <laughs> you have problems. I have problems. But you know what faith is? Faith is telling those problems, you have got no influence because I have hope in Jesus. That is faith. You understand? You understand that? So if you've got a toothache, you say, I, I'm fine. No, no, you've got a toothache. Oh, which pain. But faith is saying, Jesus died on the cross for me. He died on for my sins. He died for my problems. He died for my family. He died for everything about me. He died for my sickness as well. By his stripes, I am healed. And that's my faith. That even if I'm sick, I will not allow that to be controlled me. Because I'm a person of faith and hope in Jesus. And if today anyone is sick here, is anybody there? I don't know whether you have cancer, you have this or that. I don't mind. Jesus is able. So if anybody's sick, would you just raise your hands up? Anybody got pain, back ache, this ache, that ache, whatever, just raise your hands up. Praise God. Anyway. See, you are not denying your problem. Anyone else? Don't worry. Put it up. Don't worry. It's okay. All right. Father, I pray for the healing. Even as I've given this word. Lord, I pray, the power, of he, the power of Jesus will bring healing to any, every one of them. So, if you have a discernible problem, discernible means if there is discernible pain, just check it out, whether you still have it. I mean, if there's no discernible thing, I can't, I don't know. But if you have a discernible pain, all those who raise their hands up, if you have a discernible pain, just check it out to see whether your pain is gone or not. Check it out. Mom as ever. Nobody saying anything. Right. How is it? It's gone? 
Praise God. That's it. You see, you see, it's nothing to do with me. It's to do with his word. And you embraced his word. You were not stuck. And there is more for you and for me and for all of us. Don't get stuck like those three cities. Whatever be your problems, don't get stuck. Don't get stuck like those three cities. I knew that God would turn up because it's his word. And if anybody else has pain. So from there, I can't see you properly, but you, I think you raised your hands up. How are you? Okay. I don't know. Uh, but at the end of the service, if you still feel you want prayer, I'm available. The pastoral team is available. And nothing to do with us, it's with Jesus. All right? He died. He paid the price. You're just receiving him. Amen? All right? God bless. Anyway, so, I don't want to digress. The cross displays the Father heart. The heart of God. He wants to meet, listen, every crisis in your life. Every crisis. And he has provided and he has made provision for every crisis. <laughs> yeah. You have made provision for every crisis. Have a look. Ephesians 1.3. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. In Christ. And he means that. He really means it. You know, you know who this Jesus was? You know, if you take this amount from the center of the sun, this amount from the center of the sun and keep it one mile away from Bangalore City, the whole of Bangalore City will fry up. It's a fact. So much energy is in the center of the sun. Such a lot of it. So little. Can you imagine the sun is so big? You know what energy is there? Do you know how the sun is only one of the stars in the Milky Way, which is our galaxy? There were millions of stars in the Milky Way. And like the Milky Way, the galaxy, there are a billion other galaxies. Can you see the amount of energy that is available? And this God became man and died on the cross for you and for me. Do you know the amount of, when he says every blessing, do you know what he means? Do you know everything? Don't get stuck. Let your perception change. Every blessing is for you and for me. Every blessing. That's what he says. We can't get our minds wrapped up. You see, our minds are small. When I say every blessing, oh, there's the... But you can get your heart wrapping around it. You, your mind cannot wrap around that. But believe it in your heart. That there is blessing. Every blessing for each and every one of you. You have family problems? I had plenty. I see the Lord change them. Change it. I, over, the, over time, but change it. I've seen... Sickness changed. My daughter was in a coma. I see her get up and functioning properly. Every blessing is there for every one of us. Every one of us. That is our Lord Jesus. And you have been brought to fullness. You see how full I am? Fullness. Anyway. Okay. All right. Full of the spirit I meant. Oh, what do you thought I meant? <laughs> good, good. So don't get stuck. Don't get short change. You know what's the meaning of short change? If you have 200 rupee note and you go to the, <clears throat> to the store and you buy something for 70, 73 rupees. How much is left, John? 73 rupees. You got 200. 100? 127. But he gave you actually only 117. So he gave you 10 rupees short, isn't it? So you're shortchanged. You understand the term? Don't get shortchanged. Because every blessing means what? 
every blessing. You see, Paul had to say every blessing. You know why? If he says some blessing, then he would shortchange you. But he said every blessing. The Bible says what? Every blessing for each and every one of us. Don't get shortchanged. Receive it. All right? Receive it. If your mind cannot handle it, let your heart handle it. Say, God, that's what you give me through that cross. So when you're receiving communion, there is power in that communion service. In the breaking of the bread, there is power. When you're receiving it, you say, God, there is every blessing because of our Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Right. There's more. Every blessing. As the Father has sent me, I send you. Again, Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I send you. Jesus came to display the Father's heart. Right? And he says, you go ahead and display the Father's heart. And if they reject you, they reject me. And if they reject me, they reject the Father. So you are on the front line. Did you want to say that? You are on the front line. And he says, look, I'm there with you even to the end of age. I'm there with you. He's inside your heart. Yeah. And to present the Father's heart is to ooze out with grace. You see, we are middle class people. Many of us are middle class people. And we have got middle class uppity. We got uppity. We are uppity. So when we meet people of a different sort of behavior pattern, we judge. We judge people on the basis of our strengths. Right? So we've got some strength. We've got some discipline being middle class. So, and we are, good. we are uppity. And how can they behave like this? How can they behave like this? There's no grace. There's no grace. We don't have the Father's heart. You understand? And you and I need to go out in this world full of grace. Oozing out with grace. And then you'll see people coming towards us. They will come towards us. They will come towards us. The Bible says... In Proverbs 4, 7, it's not there. Wisdom is supreme, therefore get wisdom. But in all thy getting, get understanding. Understanding is to understand people and to connect with them. To understand how they feel, not with our uppity, but with, with eyes of grace. With eyes of grace. That's, that's going out with the Father's heart. Of course... We go out also with a gospel that sets people free. That sets people free. And we go out with power that changes the lives of people, that brings healing and deliverance. We go out with that, but we go out with the Father's heart. Hallelujah. I praise the Lord. I give thanks to God. We go out with unconditional grace unconditional acceptance and unconditional goodness because the Lord gives the ring to the wicked as well as the just. It's unconditionally good. We go out with the Father's heart in this world. I give thanks to God. I've closed. I thanks to God. Hallelujah. I praise the Lord. Those who haven't given their lives to Jesus and want to give their lives to Jesus today, who wants a transformation, who wants to have a new story in your life because he comes and changes your story and changes your journey. As we have seen in APC Bible College, the Naga lady said, now, I was previously, I was wandering all around the place. But now I have a direction. Because Jesus comes and gives us direction. 
our lives change. We go out with the Father's heart. And if you want to give your life to Jesus today, do not hesitate. Do not leave this place without saying, yeah, Lord, I want to give my heart to you. And there's a pastoral team here. They will attend to you. And if anyone needs prayer for sickness, really, the word has already gone around. But if you want prayer, if something is, you're suffering, the pastoral team will pray for you and you will see the goodness of God in your life. Amen? All right. God bless you. Let's just put our hands together one, once again for Pastor Ivan. Thank you so much, Pastor Ivan. Just call our worship team up and uh, we'll take a moment just to, uh, just to prayerfully reflect on what we heard this morning. Take a few moments just pray. Uh, maybe there's something that, um, something that God spoke to your heart this afternoon. Take a few moments to pray before we Dismiss. Could we all just rise to our feet, please, and just prepare ourselves. Also, as Pastor Ivan mentioned, if you are here and you've never received Jesus into your life, as we are standing here this morning, I want to invite you to pray in your own heart to say, Jesus, I believe you died for me on the cross. You died for my sins on the cross, that you were buried, that you rose up again. And I want you in my life. I want, to, I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want you to forgive my sins, wash my sins away. Just pray that prayer in your own heart. And then at all our exits, there will be our greeters. They'll be having this red bag with them or a green bag with them. Uh, and if you see them on the exits and you pray that prayer this morning saying, Lord Jesus, come into my life, forgive me. Then just tell them, you know, I pray that prayer. And they have a little card. They can just write your name and number and then receive that free bag that has free resources. And you can take that back with you and just hand the card back to them. We will be in touch with you. Uh, we will guide you through how to use those resources. Let's take a few moments just to pray before we dismiss this morning. We'll let our worship team uh, lead us to this time. are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you, Lord. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts, set our hearts on you. Come and
Shipping, I, I just saw I saw a picture of a, a little boy just playing out on the, on the on the ground just like we have this football field here uh, and I just saw him playing on the ground and then something happened to him so I just want I just feel we need to pray for that parent so is there a parent here I don't know mom a mom or a mother here or a father here and you had a little son playing out on the field something happened to him and that's you're burdened about that. Is anyone here? You identify with that. That's all I saw. So that's all I can say. But is there a parent here? You had a 
little child, maybe five, six years of age, playing out on the field, and something happened. And you need us to pray with you about that. Anyone here, um, you identify with what I'm saying, just, just come up, we'll pray for you. You don't have to feel afraid or embarrassed. But anyone up in the balcony? If you're in the basement, that you need to come up uh, so we could pray for you. But anyone here, you identify with that. You had a little son playing on the field and something happened. We just need to pray for you. Don't feel bad, embarrassed, just come. If you don't come, we're not going to pray. I mean, we don't know. But we just committed to the Lord. But if you, if that something happened to you this recently, I just want to pray with you. Okay. All right. So we're going to close the service. If you need prayer, we'll be available here to pray with you. We'll meet again Sunday at all our church locations around the city. Let's just close, please. Father, we thank you for this time in your presence. Thank you for your words. And I just pray you'll help each of us, God, change our perception in areas where we need to change. Let us become unstuck. Let us move in with the Father's love and, and move out into this world with the Father's love, offering God unconditional grace, unconditional love, unconditional goodness to people around us. Whatever you've extended to us, help us, Lord, to overflow with that to people. Lord, even now, I just pronounce upon your people the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of his Holy Spirit continue and remain with each of us always. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here. This Good Friday service. We'll see you again Easter Sunday at your locations. God bless you. Have a good afternoon. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.